Hi everyone, Ari here on Red Wing Angel Productions. Today I'll show you a tutorial on how to create this animation right here. So what you do first, obviously have Photoshop open, select your clip. I already got that open for you guys, so here's Mojo's Gatsby face. Take a screenshot, which is Command Shift 3. I'm gonna hide that for now. Let that pop up. Drag it into Photoshop and crop it. That's this tool right here. Okay, now we got, oops, we got most of his face cropped. There's those little edges on the corners, but those can be dealt with. Okay. Pardon for my sleep like I'm a little under the weather today. But I thought since I have time, I could do something fun. Okay, so what you do first, I'm not going to do all of them because I already have these pieces done, but I, uh, import the pictures into one single file after creating a screenshot for this process for each frame. So in those those clips I got about 12 frames. I'm just gonna re be redoing this for you. Oh wait, let me see what image. Check the image size first before you input it, import it and make sure the resolution is higher since 72 dpi is not that big. I mean, it's good for the internet, but 0.6, I believe it said. I usually work with 300 dpi, but um, normally the average printing resolution is 200. So copy paste that into your document. It's a little big, so go to your uh, I don't know what this is even called. The thing here. While holding shift so it won't be distorted, drag it to the edge. So what I do to get these bright colors, this is what it looks like originally, yeah? Create a mask, which you do in this button right here. Wait do it in the group. No, you can do it on the individual picture, but I usually don't. So, same thing right there. And then fiddle with the brightness, which is usually... Come on, just show me the thing. Usually the max brightness scale. And then... Curve it. I us What was the number that I usually use? Usually it's 80 by 120 for me. 80 output, input, 120. Again, go to your brightness contrast scale. Why isn't this showing anything? Does this no have no effect? Oh wait, no, it's 20 by 20. There we go. Sorry. And then your hue and saturation, since I thought it was a little pink for my taste, bump that up by about 5 and saturation by 10. It all kind of varies on the ver version you take your screenshot from. Since, uh, the original clip or version I did of this was really fuzzy. My clips were a little different compared to this version. This is actually isn't even a DVD version. Um, this was a version I found online. And it actually, amazingly, still has better quality than the DVD. <laughs> the problem is that it has subs, so... Um, yeah, that kind of gets annoying. So what you do next, you could use a mask Maybe today I'll use a mask to be nice. You, uh, clear that first off. You don't need your screenshot anymore. You get rid of your background here. So I'm going to use a mask today since I'm being nice, and my teacher would not like me for that. Use black, and pretty much erase it. But you're not technically erasing it since it's a mask. And um, Q 
keep doing that. I'll probably just transfer myself to another clip. This is the uh, lasso right here. I don't know if it'll do the same thing. Nope, it won't. Shucks. Okay, well, usually when I use the eraser tool, I use the lasso to help me clean up first. But I could also use the paint bucket. Let's try that. There we go. That works. You just gotta make sure you go to the edges and see how they have that annoying line right there. Make sure you erase those. Anyway, I'll transfer to a clip to speed up the process. And you do that for every image. So I got about 11 images here. Once you're done, see how it's a little pixely right here? You go to your blur option under filter and smart blur. Since this version is good in sharpness but a little pixely during this scene, I usually, uh, oh wait, wrong one. Make sure you're not under your mask. Make sure you're under the image. Usually, I use a high radius, I think. Wait, let me. I don't remember now. I have a certain number that I wrote down, but that will be requiring me opening a document. I don't remember now. I think this was low, like 10, and that was high. Maybe it was the other way around. Hang on. Sorry, going through some glitches here. I don't remember. Do, 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 do. I think it was this way because that looks really blurry. There we go. Yeah, it was this version. So the radius has to be high. Usually I do that around 50 or 60. And then the th threshold is usually around like 10. I'll just make this 60. 60.7 just because. That, usually, once you're done erasing all the lines, that really helps clean up the, uh, the areas right there. <coughs> See? All those acne spots are gone, pretty much. To get rid- I was showing this to Katie the other day. But to get rid of these scratch marks, you go to your clone stamp tool. Although it's like a little stamp over the eraser, you press Option. So wherever you're coloring, you see that little X like by his nose. Actually, you know it's a more of a plus sign. That follows where you um, where you clicked, and it pretty much copies that area. Option again, since I want the start color. cleaning up to do right here and it's pretty quick and simple except it usually takes me this whole area all over here that usually takes me a good 
10 to 20 minutes for each frame. So those 10 or 12 frames usually takes me a good two hours. And you see why I put up some time for that? Gets a little annoying, but I love you guys. So I'm going to quit the live stream image for now, but I want to discuss something really important. So, so look, you, you get how much effort I put into these things, right? It's, it's really discouraging when I see people take my stuff. I mean, it's for fun. I know that. And, okay, I'm trying to form my words, my words here. <coughs> so, like I said, each of these clips usually takes about 10 minutes, right? Sometimes a half an hour, depending on the complexity. And I've done this process for a handful of clips, which I'll show you a beforehand comparison, just for the sake of showing what I do. And, uh, yeah, just give me a sec, and I'll post them now. So you're probably wondering, hey, Ari, why did you put a watermark on your clips? Well, I, I don't know, just because I get this gut feeling that they'll be taken in their raw form. And it's not the first time. I've actually dedicated a whole playlist of people taking my stuff without my permission out of those, what, eight to ten videos, I got maybe two people to ask if they could use my work beforehand. And it's not just my art. I mean, I'm really kind of cool with people using my art, but it gets annoying when I find them on the internet without any say of where they're going. And it's weird because for most of those playlists, you think, oh, I don't see any of your art, Mary, but I could recognize my, my editing style. and. Sometimes I can even recognize firsthand which AMV they use, which is usually my more popular ones. And it's just, I have to tell these people, hey, even if it's not my own stuff, make sure you credit where you got your stuff. And many artists can relate to what I'm talking about, and really, I think it's time I said something. I'm, I'm not always the one to yell at people because... I don't get mad that easily and it's just really annoying because people will steal art or clips or whatever they're using that isn't theirs technically it's plagiarism but really are just ignorant people who are lazy I understand if you like a piece and you think it's really pretty and you want to keep it and if it's okay then you can do it I mean most internet browsers let you do that and believe me I'm a little image horrid when it comes to that kind of subject and everything, but if I actually use the piece for a reference, I make sure I source it. It's just, it's not okay, guys. It takes a lot of time and effort, and even if it doesn't take much time for some artists, it's rude to use their stuff without permission. It's like putting a lot of effort into something like a paper or whatever you like to do as a hobby and finding it on someone else's site even some people claiming it's their own and it doesn't, doesn't that ruffle your feathers or something? <sighs> I know people can be really shy just ask ask before going into action I mean even if you can't contact the artist at least give them a source link and if you can the worst that they can really say is no and if they do say no oblige their request you know just don't put their stuff up. And if you can't find the source or can't remember where you got it, go on Google search and search images and just look it up. Okay? We Heart It, Zero Chan, Bingley, and whatever the other sources there are, like Photo Bucket or whatever, those aren't sources. They aren't. And I see so many things from other artists on those sites, and it's so annoying when I find those as the source links. Because it's obviously not their home age.
yeah, I know that putting things on the internet has that risk, but we're in the day and age where technology is pretty much everything. Between job applications and uh, art institutions, they mostly accept things online and will only view portfolios on their websites and such. Well, social media in itself is the best way you can get information around. So yeah, I, I get that. that. That's a risk there. But really, it's just how people view artists. Just because one is in the art industry, people think that everything is made with a simple press of a button. Or are really rude enough to ask art out of the blue for free. I mean, this has happened to me at least three times. They're not even my followers or whatever. It's like, wow, guys, it's not like you're going to go to the dentist, get your cleanup, and ask, hmm, you know, I want this appointment for free because you're not good enough for pay. This is why I disable downloading now on my DeviantArt. And this is why I make sure that I have logos or uh, my URL watermarked on my clips and my artwork because they've been taken before and according to my tumblr art blog I've requested a few people to take down some of my art because that was before I was naive enough to think oh I'll just put up my art with my source link and people will use it but no I find it in other places so I'm trying to take those down, but of course people don't always listen to me, so I'm probably going to have to forcibly take those down through the whole copyright, whatever, notification, and it's just... <sighs> okay, so, just, long story short, don't take people's art, don't crop their watermarks, and respect people, respect their stuff. This is why, okay, this is why... I'm so frustrated because I have so many fan art pieces from the Munjo fandom. Like when I first got into it and when I was first introduced to Pixiv, there were at least 15 pages. 15 pages of art. And now there's four. You want to know why? Because people keep taking their art and putting them on other sites. And it's just frustrating because in Japan, they're really respectful when it comes to artwork. They don't take other people's things and then artists are forced to shut their websites and their accounts down just for that reason because they're tired of seeing their artworks all over and it's just it really really drives me up the wall I'm not gonna even apologize for this rant because people need to hear it and I hope that tutorial helped you know if you really want to use my clips ask permission I might say yes but I always want a source on it, and I'm gonna end it there. I'm just, I'm glad I got that off my chest. So, thanks for watching, and I hope that it helps, and you understand how much effort I put into these things. So, bye for now.